Yo, what's up, Rishu? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're looking at the Lamzu Atlantis. This is the first mouse that Lamzu made, and it was released last August of 2022. And I have been using this mouse for the last six months. Now, let's get on to the video. I just gotta say, the unboxing experience feels really premium. It's like I'm unboxing a brand new phone. And the art design, when you open the box, it's just... I believe this is called the Great Wave of Kanagawa. They have a short message here saying thank you for choosing Lamzu and the logo over here. Opening the left side will find a pouch or a bag and free mouse grips. Inside the bag we'll find the cable, manual, and a set of PDF e-skates and the adapter. Now on the right side, you'll find the mouse itself. And a dongle. And this is everything that is included in the box. Holding the mouse for the first time blew me away by how light it is at 55 grams, but let's see how it feels in the hand. I have a small medium hand size and I would say that the Atlantis feels a bit bigger than I would prefer. But setting that aside, I feel comfortable resting my hand on the mouse when not gaming. I use a fingertip claw hybrid grip my wrist resting in the mouse pad and it took some time adapting to a bigger mice from the Razer Viper Mini. The stock feet feels amazing and I have no complaints about this. Just look at this glide test. They use the one blue shell pink dots for the switches and here's a quick sound test of the clicks. It feels very tactile and excellent, you just can't go wrong with these. Now, a quick weight test, it is not exactly 55 grams, but I don't really mind the extra milligrams that my scale says. They also have 5 color options for this. I'm using the charcoal black, but there's polar white, Miami blue, masculine pink, and much green. If they release a match green for the Atlantis Mini, I would definitely go for that. I just went for the black one since Lamsu said that the coating in the black is better than the other colors. Now let's go to what I liked about the Atlantis. First, it is a very affordable wireless mouse at $90 that can compete with the other higher end mouse like the GPX and the Viper Ultimate. Although I haven't tried both of those mouse as I'm just starting my collection but a lot of reviewers have vouched for Lamzu already since they nailed everything in the first launch. And as Lamzu being my gateway to this hobby, I'm a big fan of their brand. So if you want to see more tech and gaming content, subscribe to the channel and like this video. It helps me out a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. Moving on aside for being affordable, it's wireless so you don't have to be restricted with cables when doing fast flicks. When you have been gaming with a wired heavy mouse and you just entered the light wireless mouse hobby, it would feel like you are holding something without actually holding something. Does that make sense? Anyways, within the first week of using this, my scores in aim labs 
definitely improved. I was hitting around 75,000 or more points and green shot with the Viper Mini. And within the first week of using the Atlantis, I was hitting around 85,000 or more. And to my surprise, after about a month of consistent aim training, I was able to hit a high score of 97,000 plus. And with that, I can say that having better gear actually makes you a better player. Now the battery life, this mouse has been my main for the past 6 months and it is heavily used. I never touched the Viper Mini ever since I got this, like it only gets about 5-6 to six hours of rest every day and I always turn the mouse off after using it and I would charge it maybe every 4 or 5 days. Now for some people that might be a deal breaker but for me it is good enough. If you don't use it as heavy as I do I think you can get about 1 to 2 weeks of battery life for this. Moving on to the sensor, it is using a 3395 with a max DPI of 26,000. I never had once any performance issues within the 6 months of pews. I would say that the sensor is perfect. Now I don't have a lab or tools where I can dive in deep with the testing like how Optimum Tech or Linus Tech Tips does their mouse test but based on how it felt when getting on this, I just never really had any issues with it. Next will be the angle cable. This works nicely when you're using the mouse in wired mode. Your cable won't get caught in the mouse pad when you do flicks and it's just a really nice touch. The coating. Now I live in a tropical and very humid country and I sweat like crazy. I'm sweating right now on my hands. However, the coating here is superb that even after heavy use and sweating for 6 months of using the mouse, I don't see any signs of fading. I mean, how good is that? Now, like I said, with the other colors before, Lamzu said that they had a different coating than the black one, so I can say for sure that the other colors will have a difference with heavy use. The software is easy to use as well. The debounce time is set to 12ms at default and it has 3 DPI profiles too. I turned mine to 0ms and only kept 1 DPI profile as I'm used to 1600 already throughout gaming, productivity, and browsing. Last thing I would like to mention is how comfortable it is to click the side buttons. It is a perfect spot for me and I love how it feels in my thumb. The size is kind of big but it's not something that you can push accidentally and the build quality as well. It has solid, sturdy and there's no creaking or rattling sounds when you shake it. Very nice job, Lamzu. Now let's move on to what I dislike about the mouse. Like I said earlier, a medium sized mouse isn't the perfect size for me. I would prefer something in the Viper mini size and a lower hump. A lot of people have said that the shape is based off the Endgame Gear XM1R but I haven't really used that mouse so I can't compare them. Next will be the USB-C port. Some cables won't fit if you ever misplace the cable that came in with the mouse. And speaking of the cable, why is it blue? Why can't it just be black, you know? I mean, I just care about the aesthetics of my setup and having a black cable will fit with everything nicely. Um, lastly, the grip tapes are orange. Why can it be black or white? They have black grip tapes in the store, so why not just put that in instead of the orange ones? I know this cons doesn't really affect the gameplay and performance of the mouse. Even the size never really had a negative impact on my gameplay. I'm just mentioning this for the OG V1 since Lamsu had already released the mini version months ago and they are making an update with the USB-C port in the OG V2. It is mentioned that the V2 will have support for 4K polling rate in the future so I am looking forward to that one. Um, that's it for my long term review of the Lamsu Atlantis. I would rate this mouse a 9 out of 10 and give it the board Z seal of approval as well. Well speaking of board Z, I'll be posting a review of the Pulsar X2 Mini board Z edition this coming week because Linus only reviewed the random Frank B version of the X2 and left my boy board Z out. Don't worry, got you a little bro.
So make sure to subscribe and follow my socials to be updated and any kind of support is very much appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video. That's it. Peace.